We're taking you live now to Toronto's Pearson Airport, where that's where Canadian swimming superstar Summer McIntosh is speaking after winning three gold medals at the Summer Games in Paris. Let's listen in. I mean, no, not at all. It's such an honour uh, that I was able to go back and be the flag bearer for Canada alongside Ethan. And I had a lot of fun doing so, and now to be back here, it's pretty awesome. I feel like now I can kind of take a deep breath and kind of relax and enjoy all of this. What do the next four years look like for you? Um, just back to usual training that I've been doing and just trying to continue momentum from these past games and kind of learn from it and try to just continue to keep improving and get better. What was your favorite part of those Olympics? I would probably say being flag bearer was honestly amazing, but I wouldn't be able to do that without obviously the racing that I did. Um, so favorite race wise, I'd probably say was the Trimmer Fly. Um, but overall, it just was amazing games, and they, they France did such a good job at hosting. Where are the medals right now? Uh, they're in my bag, um, uh, in a little fanny pack, because the cases that they're in there are so big, I couldn't uh, carry them in the huge cases, but they're all kind of together in a little bag. And how does it feel to be the winner of those uh, Olympic Cycle medals? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, definitely a childhood dream accomplished, um, but I'm always wanting more and wanting to keep improving because um, I'm sh always striving to be perfect and uh, that's something that you can kind of never fully reach. So that's definitely a goal of mine and what kind of keeps me going for the next four years heading into LA. We got to talk to some people that uh, did relays with you. They were at the Pan Am Center cheering you on. And uh, also some young kids that are thinking about their chance to be the next summer McIntosh. So what do you want you know, the next generation of swimmers to think about when you think of your accomplishments just at 17? Oh yes, I hope to inspire as many kids as possible. I was once in their shoes not that many years ago even, and I know exactly what it feels like to kind of look up to someone and see them and thinking that it seems so far away, but at the same time knowing that they can do it also. So I hope that they, you know, chase their dreams no matter what sport it is and just kind of find their passions in life and work hard and know that they'll be able to do all the things they want to do as long as they uh, work hard and make the sacrifices that are needed. Uh, what's your message to all the fans that just, I can't say thank you enough to all of them and all their support. It means the absolute world, and we wouldn't be here without them today. I mean, even when we were over in Paris, we could feel their support all the way over there, and it was it was pretty incredible. We uh, saw that inside the um, the final statements from Thomas Bach. He was saying that just there's so much going on in the world, there's so much insanity, but people were like the Olympic Village in his mind was just so beautiful. What was it like being there and seeing, despite what's going on elsewhere, just people maybe getting along? You tell us. Yeah, the Olympic Village is always a fun time. I mean, uh, Canada did such a good job of the whole building. Um, we had this little lounge, which was awesome, where we could get food. And the last night, um, after I mean, yesterday night after the closing ceremonies, we all went back and ate some pizza and had fun. And it was just a good time to kind of bond and kind of got to meet new athletes as well from different sports, which we hadn't really had the opportunity to do so before. So, yeah, I mean, it's always kind of cool and something that I, I miss when we are not in it. Going to a world championships, there's no village. So whenever we have to go to an Olympics or something like a games, is always something that we're in a village. Are you tired of hearing the, the question, what's next? <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's super important. I mean, obviously, I'm trying to enjoy what I've done um, these past few weeks, but at the same time, I'm always striving and thinking about the future and wanting more. So I think it's really important to always keep that in mind, for sure. to Summer McIntosh, an Olympic champion and a Canadian swimming sensation, of course. And she just arrived at Toronto's Pearson International Airport from the Paris 2024 Games. And we'll have more from those arrivals for you as they occur. And we've got Jamie Strachan standing by at Pearson International Airport. He's keeping an eye on the arrivals. Jamie, any fans there besides yourself? <laughs> Abby, uh, lots of kind of growing uh, excitement here. You know, if you kind of look behind me here, you can see, you know, the Olympians slowly kind of trickling off uh, off the plane. I see a, a few rowers, a, a, a skateboarder. Uh, behind the cameras down at the far end, you can still see Summer McIntosh. Obviously, lots uh, of interest in her. The most curious and interesting thing in all of this, Abby, is like a lot of people obviously didn't know that this was happening. So you get a lot of people kind of, as they do, coming off their flight where at international arrivals, they look up, they see Summer McIntosh, one of, you know, now the most recognizable faces in Canadian sports. So about 100 people have kind of gathered around uh, 
around where these cameras are, trying to get a peek at Summer McIntosh, who became Canada's most decorated Olympian, winning three medals uh, in, in Paris. We're expecting a few more uh, medal uh, winners to come down in the next few minutes, including swimmers uh, Josh Liendo and Kylie Mass. So lots of kind of growing excitement, lots of surprise here. Obviously, the media expecting to see Summer McIntosh, but lots of people kind of wandering through this uh, dreary arrival lounge, looking up, seeing Summer McIntosh. A nice welcome home for her and a nice welcome home for lots of people getting a glimpse of the person who's definitely become one of the most endearing and biggest stars in Canadian sport. Abby? Jamie, who else are you expecting to see at the airport in the next couple of hours? Well, well, we're expecting, uh, I'm told, about two dozen uh, Canadian athletes were on uh, the flight that landed at about 3 o'clock uh, from Paris. Obviously, Summer McIntosh, the swimmers, were expecting a few members of Canada's rowing team, a few members of, uh, of Canada's cycling team, a number of, of, of track athletes. Uh, these kind of arrivals are taking place at airports across the country, also in Montreal. Uh, I know Skylar Park landed uh, in, uh, in Winnipeg today, uh, Canada's judo medalist. And over the next few days I think you'll see you know more and more of these arrivals the Canadian athletes arriving in in, in groups but lots to celebrate uh, here on the ground for those getting a glimpse of Olympians and lots to celebrate for fans of uh, of this Canadian Olympic team they achieved obviously a historic medal hall 27 medals including nine golds both national records for a non boycotted games Many odds makers predicted Canada would win about 20, 21 medals, so those totals were surpassed. And it was not just the successes in the big sports, Abby. Obviously, Canada had lots to cheer about in the pool, lots to cheer about in track and field, those big marquee events, but also a number of Canadian firsts. Uh, Canada winning its first medal in judo, its first medal in fencing, and of course, that gold by uh, Phil Wizard yesterday in breaking, which made its debut at these Paris Olympics. So lots of different sports to cheer for and most importantly, lots of success in a variety of sports. 27 medals, 9 golds, including uh, 3 won by Summer McIntosh who arrived moments ago here at Toronto Pearson Airport, making her way through the media, signing autographs uh, as we speak right now, and then I'm sure off to some well-deserved uh, few weeks of rest and relaxation. We're going to take you now to Toronto's Pearson International Airport, and that's where Canadian swimming silver medalist Josh Liendo and bronze medalist Kylie Moss are speaking after competing at the Games in Paris. Let's have a listen. Yeah. For you to medal, this is not the first time you've had to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in, a, in this city, the most mm -hmm. multicultural city, yeah. and thinking about all the people that could get into swimming, mm -hmm. yeah. how do you feel about that? I mean, it's uh, definitely a sense of pride for me, for sure. And like that's basically it's talked about so many, so much at the Olympics that, you know, it's just what everyone should be able to be able to compete in uh, in sports. And I think that's uh, hopefully that can be carried forward and uh, have more of a culture that any anyone can compete in in any sport. It may have been yeah. talked about a lot, but maybe not enough. What do you, um, you talk about it more? Yeah, for sure. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, just, it's also, is it, is it Moss or Moss? Moss. Okay, I, we got a pronouncer. I, I want to make sure we got it right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just, just thinking about how much work it took to get here and what uh, the breather that you get now. I think you won about a week ago, right? Just over a week ago? I think so, yeah. I'm not even sure what day. <laughs> this is a question. How are the days blurring together by this point? Is it still a whirlwind? It is. It's been quite busy, to be honest. After competition finishes, we go through kind of a whole like protocol with media and stuff after. And then um, I feel like the days just fly by. And we were fortunate to be able to celebrate with our team last night at closing ceremony. So that's uh, a really special moment that I'll remember for, for forever. Um, but I, it d does still feel a little bit surreal. And I think now that we're back and take some time off and to just really process all the emotions and everything, it'll set in a bit more. No. So what did you learn about what you're capable of? Um, definitely being up with the, the top guys in the world, uh, I think, was was definitely a, a good step forward for me. And being able to race, you know, some of the best guys in the sport ever was uh, was definitely a, a good challenge for me. And I'm excited to see how, how I can improve in the future. What do you think? Just answer her question. Um, sorry, what was the question? How did you learn about what you're capable of? Um, 
I think that I can continue to fight at the top. Um, I've been on the international scene for a number of years now and to just be able to continue to challenge myself and challenge my competitors is something that I've learned. Your medals have a piece of the Eiffel Tower in them. But what are, what, if you're thinking of the piece that you, now that you're home, that you're going to hold on to forever, is it, the, is it that moment of victory? Is it who you met? What, what is it for you personally? Um, I think for me it's a combination of, of both. Um, obviously the medal is and the outcome is important and that's what we worked for for this last whole Olympic cycle but also what sticks a bit longer I think is the memories that we've made as a Team Canada, the different moments and experiences that um, make the Olympic Games the Olympic Games and make them so special. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, you, you, you nailed that. I feel like also the people that you meet is just it's probably the best part of the game. It's a different. Yeah, you, you've been. I've been in worlds and all that, but a game's a little different. You get different sports, different kind of perspectives, and to meet other athletes is always is always super fun. And to watch other sports, I mean, you watch track one night, watch the guys win gold in the four by one, that type of stuff, and those moments definitely stick with you. Yeah, you. And uh, the Bashy Burger's just down the road. Go get some. Cheese. Go get a cheese for her. Yes, sir. Here. You've been listening to Olympic medalists Josh Leando and Kylie Moss as they've just arrived at Pearson Airport in Mississauga from the Paris 2024 Games. And that's where you'll find the CBC's Hello. Jamie Strachan. He's at Toronto's Pearson International Airport waiting for those arrivals. Jamie, we just heard from the swimmers there. I just want to ask you, you know, what's going on? It seems pretty hectic. A lot of people trying to welcome the Olympians back. Some of them, some of them happen to be medalists. What's the atmosphere like? What have you seen so far? Uh, all of the Olympians uh, that we were expecting today have now uh, come uh, come by us here today at Toronto Pearson Airport. And what's really kind of interesting and, and what's fun to see here is that this isn't something that is, you know, publicized. It's not like, oh, all these Olympians are coming back. The media knows about it. So you see a lot of members of the public kind of, you know, wandering off their long flights. This is the International Arrivals Lounge. They look up and they see, you know, Summer McIntosh. They see Josh Liendo. They see Kylie Moss, people who have won medals for Canada, who have been on Canadian television uh, front and center over the last number of weeks. And Abby, Canada won 27 medals uh, in Paris. The most, uh, it's won at a summer, a non boycotted uh, summer games ever. So a lot of history there. Nine of those medals gold. About a quarter of those medals have come through Pearson Airport in the last half an hour, of course.